So here we have the Cauchy problem for the wave equation. It's uh, just the wave PDE uh, with no boundary conditions, just the initial condition for u and uh, du dx. All right, and so let's take a look at solving this. So uh, utt minus c squared u x x equals zero. We've seen by using the characteristic coordinates, uh, c equals x minus ct and tau equals uh, x plus ct. This can be converted into um, its more simple form, u c tau equals zero. Uh, and then we can solve this just by integrating with respect to both variables. So if we integrate with respect to uh, xi, then we get rid of the xi derivative and we just have the partial of u with respect to tau. And then this is gonna be some constant except we're doing PDEs, so it actually would be some function of tau. And then if we differentiate with respect to uh, the other variable, so integrate du tau, then we get u is equal to the integral of phi plus, and then some constant again, however, this is going to be some function of c. Um, so now, since these are both arbitrary, this one here we can just replace by whatever arbitrary function of tau. Um, and so let's say that uh, u of c tau is um, f of c plus g of tau. All right, and then converting back into our original coordinates, we have that x of t is gonna be f of um, x minus c t and plus g of x plus CT. So we have a superposition of a uh, left traveling wave F and a right traveling wave G. Okay, so <clears throat> now we can go a little bit further and use the initial conditions. And from the initial conditions, we can find that uh, u of xt, or rather I should say you can find, because you'll do this in the homework. Haha. <laughs> um, this is one half little f of uh, x minus ct plus f of x plus ct. So whatever the initial condition is for u, uh, that kind of gets split. Half of it goes left, half of it goes right. And at the same time, whatever we have as the initial condition for du dx uh, does essentially the same thing. But since it got differentiated, we're off by an integral, or so to speak. So we have that one. OK, so this, this formula right here is referred to as D'Alembert's formula. And it's a classical solution for the wave equation. Um, <coughs> so let's look at some uh, particular example to see what this looks like. Um, we'll take the wave equation with um, initial conditions uh, for u We'll take it to be a bell curve. And then for uh, du dx, uh, we'll take it to be 0. So it starts um, at rest, but not in equilibrium. At rest, but um, distorted by a bell curve. And then what happens when we release that string to allow it to vibrate? Um, well, uh, let's see. So by, oops, oops. So, So by D'Alembert, we're going to get that um, u of x t looks like 1 half e to the minus x minus c t squared plus e to the minus x plus c t squared. And that looks 
uh, like this. So <clears throat> here you can see that uh, there's a there's a superposition, or what, uh, rather, what do I want to say? Constructive interference, where the two waves are kind of stacking up along this uh, initial part right here. And then as, as time progresses, uh, you can see that the, the two waves are moving their, their separate ways. So this one is moving uh, to the, uh, well, that's actually to the right because I've got time. Time in the forward direction is, is going over here. So uh, this one over here is moving to the left. There we go. Uh, 